For months ago, I, well, I kept hearing, uh, this is the way I've built my business, when someone says, you need to meet such and such because they can do such and such. So I just, I followed that lead because it's been divinely orchestrated all along. I'm not a spiritual or a religious person, but I'm very spiritual, and it is God. And so the doors open, and someone, three different people kept saying, you need to meet Cindy Beyond you. And uh, finally, the third time, I was like, I'm meeting her. So I Facebooked her, and we met at Sheets. And we just started talking, and I shared with her um, a vision that I had, and um, then we stayed in contact, and then we invited some um, key players to a meeting at uh, the parish house, uh, because, I, backstory, I did my thesis, I graduated with a, a master's in Appalachian Studies um, last May, and um, my thesis was about um, helping drug-impacted families reintegrate back into society. And the tool that I used to build, say my business plan was my actual thesis, and um, the tool that I chose to use was interorganizational collaborations. And so that is bringing together uh, key members of a community that are affected by the same social problems and bringing in resources um, to do something about it. So Cindy and I met, and then she was telling me about you guys and your wonderful um, congregation and how you guys wanted to basically reach outside of the walls of your church, like most churches unfortunately do, they stay, they stay in their lane and in their church, and, and help the community. And I said, well, I have a way we can do that. So we invited uh, several organizations, the city of South Charleston, which you all know Rick Atkinson, I don't think he's here today. But um, anyway, he... Um, he was a part of it, and uh, Brett and Leanna, and um, the South Charleston Housing Authority, um, Rock Lake Presbyterian Church, and Kanawha Communities That Care. And so we all came together, and here we are four months later, and we actually built a summer camp um, that will roll over into an after-school care program for at-risk uh, children. So um, without you all, we couldn't have, we couldn't have done this, and Cindy and um, your representatives have been so amazing. And, and I'm proud to announce that you're also your foundation. Um, we needed, with all the resources, we had about a 60 some thousand dollar budget, what it would have cost us to put on such a camp for eight weeks. Um, and with our resources, we were about $8,000 short. And so um, Cindy and I, uh, well, Cindy did most of it, and <laughs> wrote a grant towards the, to the United Methodist Foundation. And they awarded us $8,000 that will buy the supplies um, and the tangible things that we need to do the camp. So if it weren't for your church um, and uh, your denomination, I would say, um, we wouldn't be able to do this. So I'm very grateful. And we were hoping to have 60, but it's working out with 30, and I think that's a good start because we're going to have glitches. We are going to have <laughs> So if anybody has a uh, multi purpose in your pocket. You see me thing. afterwards. Yeah. Um, but anyway, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I, I truly appreciate it. And there's there's going to be other opportunities. We're not done with our partnership. So I'm going to keep you guys busy for quite some time to do your work. Um, and now we're going to introduce you to Tay Taylor. And she's going to tell you a little bit um, about the, the camp and actually what we're trying to do with the kids. Um, what I really like about uh, this organization is same thing, I got told, you need to share walls, you need to share walls. <laughs> and uh, she was also told about myself. And I met them in Sheets, and it was really funny. She was like, yeah, I'm in this camp called Camp Appalachia, and it's going to get the kids from Parkland Terrace in Southmore. And I spent 25 years of my life in that project. So for the opportunity to literally give back to a place that literally made me is very, it's a full circle in my life. I'm 35 years old, spent 25 years there. So it was, it's really phenomenal and you never under, you don't really know why you do the things you do when you go to school and things like that in college and live the life you live. And, and one reason is I've done youth programming for 11 years and I couldn't find a job so I had to leave West Virginia, live for two years and come back. And I learned a lot of skills and some of the skills that I learned was mindfulness. A lot of our children, their mind is like this. Our children live with a lot more stress than what they did before. So the first thing we do is call a sun circle, which is literally in the sun. And we, we share. We allow our kids to share, get things off their chest, because they may not have ate last night. They might have seen their parents get beat up last night. 
They might have woke up to their mother on drugs. So it gives them a chance to be around people that understand. After that, we do mindfulness where we will teach them skills for behavior modification. Now, it will take time. It's not like overnight. But it will give them a chance to stop, pause. Am I going to cuss this person out? Or do I need to really process what's happening around me? So it gives them time to do that. We're also doing things, yoga, exercising. And then with more than that, we have mantras that we do every day. Each day of the week represents something that they will give back to society and give to themselves. So the main mission of this is to keep our children mindful, for one, that they are children of the Most High. They are the children of God. And number two, to let them know that they can choose their path. They are not their parents. Just like I am not my environment that I grew up in and the things that I saw, they are not either. And I, I just want to personally thank you for your contribution because I didn't think this was possible. Like, did not think it was possible. Um, but, you know, I grew up in the church. And one thing I love, I grew up in the Nazarene church down the road. And the one thing I'll never forget, this lady named Diane told me, she said, you never forget that God always loves you and you can do anything within God. Amen. So it's, it's true. It's real. So I thank you very much. Cheryl and, and Tuesday have been able to join us today, and um, we're excited to continue the partnership in, in ministry, and the eight weeks of this summer is, like Cheryl said, just a start to what we can do, and today as we celebrate Pentecost and the movement of the Holy Spirit and, and the empowerment of us through the Holy Spirit, there is no telling what God can do when we allow God to work through us for the sake of others, for the sake of our community. And so and this is this is what Camp Appalachia is really about. Um, and so we're grateful for all of the, the work um, that Cheryl and Tuesday have done, also all of the work from other organizations and, and those within our own church who have worked really hard to make sure the parish house is ready and um, you know getting a contractor in to take care of things that we needed and passing health inspection and fire marshal inspection i mean there were all kinds of things that went into making this possible and um, so uh, some people did some really hard work like um, cheryl said brett and leanna and, and rick did um, rick did a lot of heavy lifting <laughs> for this camp and and um, so we're, we're grateful for, for him and, and all of the work that he's done but again, we'll share a little bit more um, a little bit later on. But as we prepare to hear our scripture this morning, let's sing together the spirit song number 347. And you can remain seated as we sing. 